the session will be on empowering ESL teachers, e-pedagogy, challenges and way forward. And the moderator uh, for the site, Rajan Kumar Kanel, Assistant Professor of Circuit Campus Education, and he's also an MPhil scholar. And panelists will be Associate Professor Dr. Gangaram Gautam Sir, uh, who is the Associate Professor of TU, Past President of NELTA, Mr. Asok Sakota, NELTA Central Treasurer, Dr. Suman Lodari, Learning Design and Teaching Pedagogy Specialist, Research Fellow, University of uh, Technology, Sydney, Australia. So we'd like to welcome all our uh, respected personalities for the panel discussion session. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Siddhar sir, General Secretary of Neta Karnali Province. Namaste and very warm good afternoon uh, to all of you. We are going to start our panel discussion on empowering EFL teachers in e-pedagogy challenges and ways forward following uh, Abhishwari sir, as it was already mentioned as ESL. The, the panelists for today's panel discussion are, uh, as uh, Chitrasar uh, mentioned, I'd like to invite them one by one to this uh, discussion. First of all, uh, may I have the honor to invite uh, Dr. Bandaran Gautam, Associate Professor of English Education at Tirbon University, and now the Director of Open and Distance Education Center, ODEC at Tirbon University, past president of 2009 to 2011, and one of the founding member of NELTA, and he is also founding member of the founding member and now general secretary of uh, Teacher Educators Society, Teson, and he has been involved in developing English language education courses in Nepal, and he has uh, authored a number of articles, book chapters, and presented in workshops, seminars, and conferences in Nepal and abroad. So, Dr. Gangaran Gautam, sir. Good afternoon. I am here. Thank you. So, similarly, uh, may I have the honor to invite Mr. Asuk Sapkota, MPhil from Kathmandu University and MA from Tirbon University a teacher trainer, researcher and lecturer of English at Global College of Management and Department of Education, Open and uh, Distance Education Center, ODEC, Tirbon University. So uh, he has co uh, completed training and courses from University of Nevada and University of Oregon, United States. And he was a British Council teacher trainer under PTTE project in 2009 to 2011. He is a full bright teaching excellence excellence fellow, fellow 2014 US is sponsored by the Department of Foreign and Cultural Affairs, United States. And he has presented papers and developed materials in applied linguistics and ERT conferences home and abroad. He is a Microsoft certified trainer in the use of technology and he worked as a researcher under University Grand Commission Nepal, NELTA and Tribune University and presently he is the treasurer of NELTA Central Committee. So Mr. Asuk Sapkuda sir. Sorry. Uh, thank you sir. Thank you so much. Namaste to everyone. So similarly, may I have the honor to invite Dr. Suman Laudari who is the Educational Designer and Research Fellow at the University of Technology, Sydney, UTS, Australia. He specializes in digital competencies of teachers and academics. He designs evidence-based resources and delivers training to promote student-centered approaches to teaching with technology. His research interests include TPAC, digital leadership in education context, 
instructional design and digital competencies in higher education. He is also editor of Journal of NELTA as well as uh, NELTA Forum. May I invite Dr. Suman Raudari? Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Uh, namaste, everyone. Okay. Okay. So, dear all and respected panelists, uh, we are going to start with the face-to-face -face and virtual pedagogy in general and in English as foreign language context in Nepal. So, may I ask uh, Dr. Gautam uh, to say the present context, to share the present context of virtual pedagogy in our context. Um, right. So, how much time have I got? So, we have to finish each issue within 10 minutes. So, so maybe for then me it will be distributed to three uh, panelists. So, it means three minutes, Chanchun. Is that yes. my time? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, distinguished Nelda uh, conference participants. Uh, I think this um, uh, the title of this panel discussion is uh, empowering ESL teachers in e-pedagogy. Is that is that what yes. you are trying to refer to, Rajan? Yes. Yes, right. sir. So that I said E F L. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, all these are already. Right. Okay. Empowering E F L teachers in e-pedagogy. Um, I think uh, I will just uh, touch upon the uh, kind of uh, couple of uh, things there. I will touch upon the empowering terminology here. Mm -hmm. in the sense of teachers, uh, empowerment. Mm -hmm. And um, I will also talk a little bit of how um, uh, the empowerment uh, you know, concept has been emerged and how it has been understood in, in, in the literature. And then I think then we can gradually move on to the technology part in the later part of our discussion. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about empowering teachers, uh, first of all, we need to empower ourselves. That's where I would like to begin. Unless you empower yourself, you cannot empower others. So empowerment is more of inclusive term, both for me and for others with whom I work. So when you say empowering teachers or empowering ourselves, there are four um, distinct uh, characteristics that um, Murray refers, Murray 2010. So in order to empower ourselves, the first, um, you know, um, attribute that we need to develop is we need to be positive. So be positive. That's the first attribute that we need to inculcate and nurture among ourselves if we are thinking of empowering ourselves. The second attribute that could, that should be nurtured among us is we need to believe in what we do and in ourselves. So we need to believe in what we do. We need to believe in what we practice in the classroom because we are teachers and we do things with a purpose. When we do, do things with a purpose, we need to believe in that. We need to, we should not feel embarrassed of the work and practice that we do in our professional practice. So believing in yourself, that's second one. The third one, you need to be proactive, not reactive. So do not protest what somebody else has said, rather come up with some kind of innovation. The innovation could be a very small thing that you can do in the classroom. So be proactive, not reactive. And the fourth one is we need to be assertive. We need to we need to have a clarity in our behavior um, rather than being aggressive in others' behavior. So be assertive, not aggressive. I really like these four different attributes that we need to nurture when we talk about empowering teachers. Um, so as the foundation of empowering teachers, I think we need to empower yourself. Uh, or in that sense, in our sense, we need to empower ourselves first, then only we can uh, go beyond us and then empower other people also. I think I'll stop there for now and I'll come back to this empowerment 
uh, factor a little later after I hear oh. the other speakers. Okay, thank you, sir. And may I, may I ask the same uh, query, or may I have uh, Mr. Ashok Sapulda, sir, to shed light on the context of virtual pedagogy uh, in Nepal and in ELT context? Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Actually, if I start, uh, if I go with the current condition of Nepal, mm -hmm. virtual pedagogy or online education or distance mode was not well practiced and it was challenged before COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Like as a, as a faculty of working in OREC Open and Distance Education Center and Nepal Open University as a faculty there, people had very less trust on online education. But after COVID-19, you can see Every day there are workshops, every day there are online education system. People are working with like there is a there is a flood of online going on. So in one hand, on the, on the other hand, when we go to the classroom practices, still there is a debate. I can give you an instances from a Pokhara municipality which has published yes. a notice that not to use any online classes and yes. follow the curriculum. Yeah. Government of Nepal has recently published, three days ago, published a notice that not to begin new curriculum using online. Yeah. And, and teachers are confused. Which applications to use? Yeah. There is a bombarding of applications mm -hmm. in the market. Yeah. But what is our access? We were accustomed with the Facebook, with face to face. In yeah. between, we were not, I believe we were not well prepared and COVID-19 started. Mm -hmm. And these remarks has triggered us which, which application to use, particularly to the context. And as you just said, technology, for example, Zoom, one month ago, there was a version 4.6.1 regarding Zoom. Mm -hmm. And if you see now, that is 5.0.1. Mm -hmm. It means technology is upgrading in the one hand. On the mm -hmm. other hand, we are also upgrading ourselves. But what our what about the students who are during the, who are in the COVID nineteen period and locked at home? This okay. is challenging. In context of teacher in and the coming to your context here just now regarding instruction, it's not clear map coming up regarding instruction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you a lot, Ashok sir. And yes, uh, Ashok sir said uh, so conducting virtual classes here may create um, a sort of digital divide and yes uh, Gautam sir say uh, if we be positive believe in ourselves be proactive and assertive such things uh, could be carried out uh, in a, a nice way uh, so may I may I ask uh, Dr. Laudari uh, to shed light on this issue uh, sorry, Rajan sir. So I was making some notes. So you want me to talk about empowerment? Uh, is that right? So I'm talking about what is the present context of virtual uh, pedagogy. Uh, so since we are just uh, trying to shift from face-to-face -face pedagogy to virtual um, pedagogy, or we are just thinking about that, what is the present context in Nepal? So this is what I'm... Uh, Thank you, Rajan. Uh, so, look, you know, I'm uh, in terms of my geographical location. So, uh, I'm located uh, a bit away from Ganga Sir, Asuk Sir, uh, or you guys. But uh, from my observation, what I can see is, as Asuk Sir mentioned, you know, talking about virtual pedagogy, uh, there's been, I think, a, a sharp rise in the uptake of technology. Uh, no doubt about that. But what we need to understand is. Uh, as Ganga sir mentioned earlier about empowerment, I think this nuance, you know, this idea of empowerment, uh, you know, being um, competent to use technology needs to be nuanced, you know, further down, needs to be understood, you know, from micro perspective, as there are layers of things which Ganga sir, you know, discussed, and I completely agree to that, and I'll probably add a few things when Ganga sir adds to what he has to say. What I would like to talk here within this two minutes is that um, we need to understand that what we're doing right now is not a carefully planned online teaching and learning. 
which is completely different from what's happening right now. As of now, as I can see, a lot of colleagues, you know, I completely appreciate what you're doing. Look, you know, I'm not trying to verify you or trying to label that your practice is not good. But I think what we need to understand is replacing your face-to-face -face classroom, you know, so that sort of uh, portrays the general virtual pedagogy, Rajan sir. So I'll come back to that. Mm -hmm. Replacing your face-to-face -face classroom, you know, which is very, very much content focused, uh, teacher driven with mm -hmm. Zoom. So for example, instead of going to classes, you know, once a week, now if you do your Zoom session once a week or once a day, mm -hmm. six days a week, um, mm -hmm. all you're doing is you are lifting your face-to-face -face practice. And, you know, so that whole practice is called lift and sift. So you're lifting and sifting it using, you know, Zoom because you can't go to that, you know, you, you can't go to college, you can't teach it online. So we need to understand, you know, that's the, I think, threshold that we need to, you know, start from. So virtual mm -hmm. practice, you know, is a broader term. Um, mm -hmm. And what we need to understand is what's happening right now in Nepal in a lot of cases is mm -hmm. a lot of replacement, you know, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, replacement, uh, replacement of what's happening, you know, substitution of your face-to-face -face practice. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to move beyond that and try to, you know, what Ganga sir said earlier about innovation, try to innovate, mm -hmm. try to bring in, you you know, bring in uh, newness to the practice. Uh, 10 seconds more. Plus, um, you know, um, as uh, Asok sir said, technology is not the priority. Technology has, no, you know, should not be the, you know, focus of what you're doing. It has to start with pedagogy. You need to understand what you can do with the given technology. So I think that's the core. That's that's at the core of virtual pedagogy. And I'll continue the discussion later. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Suman sir. So I'll come back to the challenges of e-pedagogy. So in so next issue. So uh, I'd like to ask uh, uh, on uh, the present context of uh, EFL teachers. Uh, in terms of their e-literacy or e-expertise. So since we are trying to um, teach through online mode or uh, we are talking about uh, virtual pedagogy, uh, empowering them so through the virtual uh, instruction or uh, launching virtual instruction, then what is the present context of EFL teachers in terms of their e-literacy or uh, what is their expertise uh, in general? And so may I ask to Dr. Gautam? Right. Okay. Now I think I will touch upon those uh, foundation that I mentioned earlier and yes. start from there. Uh, so yes. at the moment there are two parallel uh, there are there are two para parallel uh, school of thought at the moment. Yes. And there is uh, there is there is one pa group led by these online uh, pundits who say that <laughs> online is the only solution. There is nothing other than online. And there is another school of thought that says that in Nepal, online is not possible at all because 22% people have connectivity access. Um, I think that these are two extreme poles and we need to find a way in between. Uh, that, that's where I talked about be positive, be, believe in yourself, be proactive and be assertive. So let's there are so and and also if you look in the practice at the moment there are two different types of uh, practices one is crisis management practice yeah. we all are doing at the moment whoever yeah. finds whatever tools in whatever context we are trying to use them mm -hmm. which is absolutely fine to create appetite among mm -hmm. among us and the second one is um, there are also initiative in certain institutions where people are creating a framework, pedagogical framework for streamlined, organized, systematic pedagogy. Now, in Tirubhuvan University also, we are working on that. We are working on a uniform, generic framework in which we can bring all TU teachers into that particular framework. So these two practices are parallelly going on. I think in the transition period, that's fine. So what are the challenges now? The challenges are, there is no reference. There are references. 
and um, from I'm those asking about present back. context of illiteracy of uh, EFL teachers. Right. Um, if you are talking about the literacy level of the teacher, what kind mm. of literacy are we talking about? Are we talking about um, e literacy that Suman, Suman Lodari holds or you are mm. talking about the literacy that Gangaram holds? We, mm. There is a variation mm. in defining what literacy is in terms of using e-pedagogy. Mm. There is a big range. So my mm. observation is we all are literate. Everybody, everybody operates Facebook. Everybody mm. operates internet. Everybody, everybody uses electronic devices, whatever it is. Yeah. All teachers, yeah. all teachers use those devices. So yeah. let us not say that we are not literate. We are literate. But the yeah. issue is not whether we are literate or we are not, whether we can do or we cannot. The issue is how to start, how to approach these yeah. varied level of literate professionals among yeah. us. Yeah. Right? So yeah. designing the customized yeah. model to address the varies, varied needs of the um, technological competence among the teacher. I think that's, that's the key. So there is a growing interest. There is, there is, there is a strong willpower among, among teachers in jumping into the technology. Some people want to leapfrog, some people yeah. want to go it in an incremental manner. So yeah. the issue is not literacy. The issue yeah. is how to approach to the particular yeah. individual, to the particular teacher with the correct mode of yeah. beginning from where they are. Right. Yeah. Okay. So let us start from there. So that's okay. that's the right approach. Um, um, I would like to suggest. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And Asuk, sir. Uh, so yes, uh, Dr. Gautam says, uh, so we can start from where we are, even, uh, so we should not say we are not uh, uh, illiterate in that way to start uh, um, up with, uh, from where we are. And what do you think about uh, uh, the condition of the teachers on delivering uh, their um, teaching through online mode in context. Uh, th thank you, Rajan, sir, for your thanks. I will not repeat what Ganga, uh, Ganga sir has stated here. Mm -hmm. As you just said, having technical, uh, technological competence and being able to use uh, technology into practice are different things. And I mean to say about practice. So uh, uh, in this COVID-19 period, we are around uh, 50 plus days that we are running up with. For the first two weeks, it was okay. But now still parents are thinking differently. If you see from a school level, I, I, have, I have seen myself, some kids, parents, or parents of some kids uh, who are studying in nursery, UKG, LKG, are running here and there just yeah. to learn Zoom. Neither their parents know, nor their child know. The school said, let's start it. Well, here it means they are not digitally competent. Mm. So it could have been, so are we prepared? Is a question. Yeah. Having discussion is fantastic. Because mm. these virtual conferences, at least we can be positive and it, it, it is creating a positive platform to know what about technology is. Mm. So in higher level, I believe it might be okay, but still there are challenges. Yes, of course. There was a news by uh, na, na, by Noya Patrika a couple of days ago. Vidyarthi You see, yes, where people, people are, there is no network. Second, two G or three G networks. People, it, it does not accept it. We can imagine yesterday's example. Most of you, if you see, there are two hundred seventeen people here in the today's yes. platform. And yeah. among 217, I believe more than 50 to 70 people have participated in the different, almost all the conferences that is conducting now. Yeah. You can imagine. And next, I already, as Banga sir said, I conducted a survey during this COVID uh, uh, period among 50 teachers on the seven provinces, which have shown that they have known Facebook, as Banga sir said, they yeah. have known at least Zoom, they have yeah. known search engines. They have known Google applications, they know YouTube, and they know Google Meet. Yeah. 
so at least let's not start to what you have not known let's start from what you have known yeah. and let's take it into the classroom and the last thing i just like to state is are we in comfort zone or conflict zone if mm. teacher is in conflict zone he cannot make the students into comfort zone so we first as a teachers need to be in comfort zone then only we can make the students in in the comfort zone that's what my claim is thank okay. you thank you thank you sir now now so over to dr lorai sorry uh to answer your question you know how ready teachers are uh, yeah. kids um yeah. i think look you know my research uh, my phd research focused on uh, teacher educators readiness to use technology and i think many of you some of you who are in the room uh, sorry in audience uh, maybe filled out the survey that i sent of course, um, of course i did the paper is in the press uh, will come out probably in in next couple months um uh, but the but my phd research is available um you know i'm because i can't discuss the whole thesis uh, i just would like to tell you a couple of things um to you know as ganga sir mentioned for teachers to be ready to teach with technology teacher educators have to be ready so who are teacher educators teacher educators are colleagues you know people like you and me you know mm -hmm. who teach students who study b ed or med courses especially mm -hmm. those who teach b ed courses because b ed course is the it's supposed to be it, it is supposed to be the most mm -hmm. intensive teacher training that teachers ever receive mm -hmm. but look at the esl curriculum uh, even masters curriculum mm -hmm. um it's a sincere request i mean ganga sir is in the in the audience i'm sure ganga sir will take take it on board we need to consider you know where technology sits within our curriculum um mm -hmm. i'm not talking about practice within the curriculum i think in the revised b ed curriculum you know which was being implemented in 7 16 17 when i was in uh, kathmandu mm -hmm. uh, or nepal um there was one particular course on technology use in education or english language education but the existing mbed course had one unit in one of the subjects and that is also taught within the within the same classroom where students sit you go and tell okay ict is this ict means you know information communication technologies so you know how do you expect now you teach that to students and how do you expect teachers to be ready to you know to to use technology that's the first question that you know i would like you all to consider mm -hmm. second thing competency itself has to be ganga sir briefly touched on it and sagun ji mentioned it in the chat it has to reflect the context context being what asok sir said you know people having to run to the top of the hill or people not having or even students not having ability so you know it has to be context context reflective uh, we need to de probably develop our own uh, digital framework but digital competencies basically needs to you know consider what technology do i use and when when can i use it can i use it for group work can i use it for peer work can i use it for writing class can i use it for speaking mm -hmm. class mm -hmm. and what content do i teach can i teach william wordsworth's uh, you know poetry using zoom so mm -hmm. you know if you can make good decisions around those things which are technology mm -hmm. pedagogy and content i think you are competent enough oh. but you oh. have to know you know what your students know and don't know plus oh. uh, what i you know i differ slightly both with ganga sir and asok sir that communicative use of technology does not necessarily translate into pedagogical use of technology if you know facebook simply because you know facebook does not necessarily mean that you know how to use it in classroom effectively so mm -hmm. i think i'll end there uh, but yeah. we'll continue oh. the discussion okay thank you thank you dr lordari and so yes uh, dr gautam earlier said uh, so there are two opposite poles or two extremes one extreme Uh, advocates say that uh, only online is the mode uh, to be discussed now onwards people are those uh, who think online should be rejected online mode should be rejected that that's not the solution uh, so uh, we can go somewhere in the middle in the one hand on the other hand Uh, so those people who are little aware of technology uh, so even they are not being ready to implement what they could have done uh, into practice uh, they say i cannot uh, teach uh, through online uh, mode even if they used to 
uh, used to have a lecture there in the classroom and they can uh, they can uh, you know carry out facebook live every day and they say no i cannot imagine of this so so there are such extremes and uh, so now what are the challenges of uh, e pedagogy in general in uh, nepali context and particularly in the context of english language teaching and learning we are uh, uh, going to discuss on this uh, particular uh, issue and i would like to request uh, dr gautam uh, to speak on this issue in what are the challenges what are the issues in efl uh, e pedagogy yeah. so what are the challenges of e pedagogy uh, in nepal in general and particularly in the context of english language teaching i think uh, the first challenge is um, there is um, there is so much information um, available around so teachers are overwhelmed so if you bombard them with a lot of materials it's like you buy 100 books and you bring them home and then you never know which one to start with so you never start mm -hmm. so um, i think um, that's one of the big challenges at the moment there are so many things going on everybody talks about online and then mm -hmm. if you attend a conference like this you are given a lot of information on it mm -hmm. so um, teachers sometimes uh, there is a great deal of anxiety among them mm -hmm. so uh, overwhelmed with information and not being able to figure out uh, where to start and how to start mm -hmm. Uh, that's one. And another one is, uh, as Sumanji very rightly pointed out, there are there is no there is no mentorship. There is no mechanism of developing teacher in bringing them in e pedagogical uh, sector. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, they are they are they, they are they are doing in a kind of learning by doing approach. There is no systematic uh, and organized support and mentoring backstopping system for teachers who would like to develop expertise in in pedagogy uh, so i think we need to blame ourselves in that because we are in the front line of developing and training teachers so mm -hmm. if you look at the pre-service or in-service uh, teacher education system mm -hmm. uh, so technical support for mm -hmm. you know embracing technology in teaching is virtually mm -hmm. non-existent at the moment Mm -hmm. If you look, look at the pool of the trainers in the Ministry of Education and mm -hmm. also the teacher educator among ourselves. Mm -hmm. So you don't see that. So there is a missing link between what we talk in the classroom and what mm -hmm. the teachers do in, 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 in their classroom. So there is no breathing between mm -hmm. what they learn in class and what they perform in actual classroom. Mm -hmm. And the next, uh, I think, issue and the challenge is uh, how can we help and support the teachers to identify the appropriate kind of materials, the digital mm -hmm. tools and the resources available um, online? Mm -hmm. So these are the kind of uh, on teacher side. The other um, uh, infrastructure side, um, mm -hmm. the biggest issue at the moment is the connectivity and infrastructure. Um, no infrastructure in the school, no connectivity. And if, mm -hmm. as you can see, we are having a lot of issues with the live classes that we run in ODEC at the moment. Every day we have ODEC's regular live classes. And then out of 50 plus students, only 30 to 35 students appear in the classroom. And most of them say that the internet is not very good to attend those live classes. So connectivity is yet another issue. So, um, um, so these are some of the kind of major challenges that I can mention now and I'll okay. come back if um, if there are more okay thank you sir so thank you sir now without uh, repetition uh, so may I request uh, Mr. Ashok uh, Sarkota sir uh, to say something about the challenges of e-pedagogy in general and particularly in uh, ELT context uh, thank you thank you Rajan sir for your query without repeating Ganga sir remarks I will start with the things Technology is supplement, mm -hmm. not everything, yeah. right? And if we see the, the users of broadband, the users of data, the use of wireless, it's very nom nominal mm -hmm. in the context of Nepal. So here, 
as Finn and Ivam says, digital divide will be there in the society, no doubt. It will exist, it was there, it is there, and it will be there. But the concern is, the longer the COVID-19 period, the bigger the gap will be the digital divide. And our task is to minimize this divide whether we can. There's a haves and haves not in our society among teachers and among students both. Mm, of course. There will be. Mm. And next, as now what there are several cases, as Ganga Sar stated. Yes, where I for, as a faculty, I teach in Ore. And I have been looking for first semester students and fourth semester students at mm. a higher level. In fourth semester, I teach sem I'll give you a case number one. In IT mm. seminar class where we have 100 students. And the mm. students in the classroom, we are using Zoom. In the classroom, the number is 37. Mm. And yesterday we had a class, it increased to 42. Now still, we are not in the 50%. From this, you can imagine the situation. And case number two, we teach with no matter if you have in city area, it's okay. At least people could have it. But in urban area or remote schools, it's always a challenging. There, there is still a digital divide and yes. there is a panic in the students yes. what to do. And what happens, the biggest problem is when some students join class and when others fail to join class, the one who fail to join class gets panic. Yeah, of course. The more panic is there. So I have, you, I have you, lots you, of you, messages you, you, from you, the students. The panic one. Hmm. And here also, what the challenges are is, as Ganga Sar says, basic orientation to the teachers might be by, by the administration or by the authority is necessary, number one. Yeah. Number two, and this is a very big mass. Number two, many teachers don't have electronic gadgets. Yeah. And sometimes if you have electronic gadgets, you have a power cut problem. And when you are teaching and when there is a power cut, again, you get more panic and or power fluctuation still we have and the next is still many we know it and let me tell you there are more than 200 plus participants here how many of you you can reflect yourself how many of you started learning technology yourself and how many of you were supported by your institution the one who, who can say yes i learned myself the number is very high so the first thing is infrastructure and preparedness if we are prepared i think we can we can uh, start the classes with whatever apps application are possible but the most important thing is that still are we ready or not this is a challenging factor thank, thank you thank you thank you thank you mr ashok now so may i proceed on to dr laudari um, thank you, sir. So I've got two questions here, right? Uh, challenges of e-pedagogy in general and yeah. in, in, yeah. in ESL and how do we yes, support? Sir. So the yes. challenges is I think we also need to consider the broader you know, perspective. Yeah. So if you look yeah. at some of the reports published by United Nations, so what it tells is Nepal stands 140, you know, 140 out of 176 in the ICT development index. And it stands at you know, 165 position, 100, you know, again, 165 out of 168 countries when it comes to e-government index, such as, you know, using um, technology for governmental, you know, uh, or, you know, activities related to government. So that sort of tells where we are in terms of technology adoption when it comes to, I mean, you know, tech fields such as banking and many other industries, you know, adopted technology quite early and but technology arrived, um, you know, to educate in, 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 in education very lately. So I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, we're falling behind, but also there are other reasons that you need to consider. For example, in the university where I'm working, they're quite, you know, they're currently running a technology project and their budget for this year alone, to procure certain technology and to manage technology, you know, technical resources is more than $25 million. So that tells that technology is very, very expensive. However, the good, you know, the silver lining in the cloud is that there are certain technologies that are freely available. Gangasa can definitely talk about it. You know, they are using Microsoft, 
Uh, Google also offers, you know, Google app, you can create Google Classroom and do a whole lot of things. So while, while you know, talking about lack of, you know, resources such, such as financial resources, um, I need to remind you that, you know, to everyone that there are, you know, resources which are free, you know, available freely. So that's, you know, I mean, that um, our, our position in technology uh, adoption in general in society is far behind as compared to many other societies. That's what I wanted to say. And that's probably posed a lot of challenges around, you know, parents' digital literacy, students' digital literacy, and teachers' digital literacy itself. Uh, I think the other, the other thing that I can see is lack of policy clarity. For example, if you look at higher education policy, the most recent one, it does mm. mention that technology will be used in uh, teaching learning mm. activities in higher education uh, classes. But it mm. does not tell. This is very funny. I mean, whoever writes these policies, I, I just don't understand. So just that one line in higher education policy does not you know, provide enough guidance around you know, how you're going to use technology. So, mm. you know, plus I can go on talking about other policies, such as you look at ICD in education master plan, which was you know, uh, implemented implemented in 13 2013 mm -hmm. it does mm -hmm. talk about teachers you know enhancing teachers uh, competencies but it does not go into detail you know how will it go and how it impacts bar or mid courses so there are a lot of policy clarity issues the other mm -hmm. thing is obviously curriculum reform which i touched on you know earlier uh, mm -hmm. i think we need to um, make sure that technology becomes an integral part of the curriculum if we are moving mm -hmm. to you know if if we are moving to you know say more sort of blended learning and technology mm -hmm. becomes a part of, you know, educational activity. Plus mm -hmm. uh, teacher educators and all the trainers, mentors need to obviously, you know, change their practice and mm -hmm. not just using technology. If you use Zoom or Teams and run mm -hmm. a particular lesson or a class, you know, afterward you need to discuss with your students, why did you choose to use Zoom, you know, for that, for that, you know, for that particular lesson. Say if you mm -hmm. use Facebook private group, you need to discuss mm -hmm. with your students why you use mm -hmm. Facebook private groups and how it helps uh, ESL learners or EFL learners to learn language better. So that students, you know, as well as getting that practical, you know, uh, experience, hands-on experience of using technology, they also yeah. learn the, you know, um, underpinning rationale behind your choice and your pedagogical choices and how you run your classes. Now, how do we, how do we support? Support has to come in different forms you know, uh, provide so support. We will discuss uh, supporting yep. the issues. All right. Okay, then. Okay, good. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lawnari. In the meantime, uh, while discussing about uh, the challenges uh, of e-pedagogy, uh, Under Secretary of Nepal Government, uh, Mr. Dhirendra Sarma Lamsal writes, uh, capacity development, attitude of the teachers, resource management, and financial management are the main challenges of virtual class at a, as a pedagogical transformation. Or illustration, he says, uh, according to the economic survey among the uh, 29607 community-based schools in Nepal, only uh, 8,366 have computer facility and 3,676 use technology in teaching and learning. We have conducted a pilot, uh, conducted piloting the virtual class of English, science and math subject of three months, for three months in Bheriganga municipality Surke through using multicasting way. And uh, from that observation, C-A-R-F, uh, he writes the acronym, capacity uh, development, attitude of the teacher, uh, resource management and financial management are the main challenges of virtual class as a pedagogical transformation. And now, so we have discussed about the challenges uh, so far. So I could not take all the uh, questions and comments written over here in the chat box. Uh, so now uh, I would like to move uh, to us. So we we have said, uh, we have discussed about the present context, uh, the context of the teachers, and what panic does it uh, create or has it created among the parents and uh, the students, and what challenges uh, the teachers may have thought of, even if they have not experienced, what challenges they may have thought of uh, while we are talking about uh, uh, 
teaching through online mode and this whole thing. And what are uh, the ways forward then for empowering uh, the teachers uh, in ESL and e-pedagogy? The ways ahead. This is what uh, we are going to discuss now. What are the ways ahead then? So what should we do? What are the push potentialities? So in the name of not using technology, should we avoid the technology and remain all of the technology and uh, stay um, based on that face-to-face um, -face mode of instruction alone? Or uh, in the name of technology, uh, so are we thinking of avoiding the um, conventional face-to-face -face mode of uh, instruction or uh, that um, teaching through technology is just a mode, medium, not um, the substitution. So, what are the ways ahead uh, for uh, the teachers to uh, empower uh, themselves in the context of Nepal, uh, especially to uh, the English language teachers? Um, Dr. Gautam. Thank you, Rajanji. I think I'll be brief. Uh, number one, uh, I think this is also um, visible clearly in the chat box from the participants, Sagunji and other colleagues. Uh, I think number one is the policy advocacy. That's where NELTA can play a very strong role at the central level and also in the provincial level. Um, creating a technology friendly policy. Um, I'm talking, I'm not talking about substituting the, I mean, physical face-to-face -face mode of education by technological innovations. I'm talking about embracing technology mm -hmm. for enhanced learning and teaching, right? So if we stay with Corona, even then we cannot completely replace the face-to-face -face thing. We are a human being. Um, so we need to fight with Corona by any means and we need to get over it. So policy advocacy for embracing technology in education. I think that's the first step. So when I say first step, I'm not talking about the hierarchy. I'm talking about different, um, you know, um, strategies and among them, that's one. And the second one is um, start with a small thing. Um, in order to do that, create a, a kind of alliance building among the stakeholders, teacher educators, teachers, and let's sit together. And that's also uh, NELTA can play a very strong role in it. Invite teachers, talk about the digital tool that they're using. For example, talk about the Facebook, discuss how Facebook could be used as a pedagogical tool. Is it possible? It is not possible. If it is possible, how it is possible. If it's not possible, why it can't be possible. You know, that kind of thing. So generation, raising, you know, awareness among the teachers and building alliance among the like-minded people. And also the third one, I think, encourage teachers to play with technology. So mm -hmm. provide them digital tools, mm -hmm. equip the schools, talk to the local governments. If you look at the local government's strategy now, you will find Parvidi in every, uh, almost in every document now. Parvidi Maitri, Parvidi Maitri Sitsya, Parvidi Maitri Prasasan, you see a lot of Parvidi Maitri terminology, but Sumanjali Vanayastu, it's not been very strategically mentioned. There is no strategic mm -hmm. direction, but they mentioned it. What to mention the Garyasatar strategically, I think we need to play our role there, how we can capitalize their mention, vaguely mentioned policy into a strategic document. That's where we can play our role. And next, the fourth one is engage teachers throughout the, the process. Do not prescribe them that this is the technological tool yeah. and you need to use it. No. Involve and engage teachers right from the beginning in whatever yeah. way it is possible. And yeah. then approach in an incremental manner, not yeah. as a leapfrogging manner when you develop the teacher. So build their confidence and help them through gradual backstopping and technical support. So if you can do that, I think local people are local people or authorities are doing very good job. Number mm -hmm. one, if, if you see the examples, they are mm -hmm. collaborating with local FM stations or televisions <coughs> and broadcasting the things. 
Mm. Assigning a teacher from one school and encouraging the students who are at home in the morning or in the evening to listen mm. either rhymes or mm. some lessons, some mm. recordings and broadcasting it so that the, mm. those who have at least televisions, those who mm. can listen FM station can at least get benefit from it, number one. Mm. Number two, every day after, after 5 p.m. in Radio Nepal, there is a program Bal Jaudari. At least the, the, the students who are studying in lower grades can be benefited by the art of storytelling. So, secondly, is this. Third, government has also said those who are having internet access, they have e pustakalai where they can share the stories. Uh, at least they can read our share. But before we, we see the positive side, but before we go to this positive side, we need to have preparedness. So, what to have a preparedness? To have a support system, number one, it is better if each, each school or colleges or universities who they have their students or they can have at least contact, might be a uh, bulk SMS system in a higher level or in lower level, the students are with you, they can call to your parents and ask for the well-being, number one. Number two, from that well-being, they can prepare a preliminary data, how much of them have internet access and how much of them don't have internet access. Then number three, decide which application to use at which level mm -hmm. and number four at least have interaction it could be uh, occasional interaction with the class mm -hmm. and the most thing is that many teachers are getting problem because there is lack of support system whom to ask at least in one society one one uh Gaumpalika or, or Nagarpalika municipality or else what will happen is that at least we can identify a couple of people uh, in a school who are at least good at technology and take a support system and when the students are in problem whom to ask the most important difficult thing is that at least if you uh, develop a kind of support system the teacher will not get in problem the student will not get in but gradually we can bring, uh, bring to the front and yeah. in lastly in higher level we have best scholars in nepal as well so last like, like the likewise here we are having a panel discussion from home and abroad we can have a recorded and at least keep in the YouTube so that the, yeah. the, the students could be benefited from the yeah. recorded lectures. Yeah. This could yeah. be done. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Asuk, sir. Now over to Dr. Lauren. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, it's a bit of a challenge because both uh, Ganga sir and you know Asuk sir have already yeah, covered yeah, a lot sir. of this. Without repeating, um, yeah, I won't repeat anything. But I think what I'll add is um, I think Sagun sir mentioned. I read one of his um, uh, chats uh, in the chat box. He said that we need to develop a local level, you know, sort of sort of localized digital framework, which uh, sort of understands and carefully considers the local context. So what I'm when I say local context, it's very important to understand that uh, where are such teachers? You know, Kathmandu, sorry, uh, Trivandrum University, OREC, the facility that OREC has is completely different from what you have, you know, in your disposal, Rajan sir. So you know, that's one thing. So I think a broader level policy can't cover that. So it's for that reason, all the institutions need to have their own in institutional strategies. I think that's what I would say. So, you know, so when I say institutional strategies, all the schools need to consider, you know, what can be done and what can't be done. So I think that sort of provides, and I think also covers what also said about, you know, serving students who have access, who don't have access, we have internet, you know, sort of things. And if you consider, or if you think back to 1990s or maybe eight, you know, late 80s or early 90s and, you know, early 2000s, there were, I think, programs, uh, radio teacher training programs. Uh, and I remember watching, you know, uh, school lessons on television uh, back in 90s, uh, you know, late 90s, you know, uh, through uh, Nepal television. So what happened was, you know, now this is my personal opinion. We started, I think, along with the rest of the world, but we sort of stalled. You know, we didn't move beyond a certain point because of the political things. So what I'm saying is, but that carries a meaningful, I, I think that, that that still carries a value. Uh, not all places, you know, not, not in all places we have access. So maybe use radio, FM, you know, or, or televisions to broadcast lessons. Um, and somebody in the chat mentioned that, you know, I record my voice and I pass it to students. Yes, that's mm -hmm. what I was about to say. Use freely available tools and understand your context. Mm -hmm. um, I would say use at least one of the LMSs. Mm -hmm. you know use conference tools uh, if it's accessible with your students if not 
you know, at least use Messenger, record your voice, send it to students. So, you know, they can at least have access to some of the lessons that they missed. Um, and, you know, this is, and, and teachers need to obviously, you know, uh, keep developing themselves. I think I can't mm -hmm. stress enough how important it is. Um, mm -hmm. Explore, learn, you know, uh, mm -hmm. learn from colleagues, women abroad, as Ganga Sar mentioned, you know, mm -hmm. he, he talked about why it is important to have that, you know, teacher and teacher educators network and talk about, you know, talk about technology and practices. And the other thing is, most of this, again, depends on teachers' attitude and beliefs. So, um, you know, um, what teachers need to do is, um, sorry, that's my daughter, excuse me. Um, so, um, you know, teachers need to maybe correct their beliefs if they are not, if they don't believe that technology can be helpful, I think. That's, that's what I would like to say. And obviously resources and support, institutional support such as, sorry, uh, you know, technological support, time, technical support, manpower, like if you have problems, say, with Zoom, you know, Zoom bombing. And, you know, many other support, you know, supports can come in different forms such as, you know, resources. So, how will say we are ESL teachers, right? So how will we teach poetry? So sort of a you know sample lesson which integrates okay. technology. So those okay, sort of sir. resources. That's what I'm referring to. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And before wrapping up this panel discussion, I'd like to uh, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Sagun Srist to reflect uh, from uh, the side of over 200 participants uh, in this panel discussion. Uh, Sagun, sir, may I ask you? To reflect for one minute. Yes, thank you, Razan well, sir. Can you hear me? Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, we can also? hear you. Oh, yeah, welcome, Sagun, thank sir. Thank you, Razan sir. Razan sir, and the entire team. First of all, yeah, today's panel discussion has been really, so, really sir, exciting. Please uh, share your video too. Okay. Is it necessary? Okay. Oh, yeah, welcome, okay. sir. Uh, Thanks a lot. Today's you know panel discussion has been really really insightful in, in different uh, in, in different aspects. For example, mm -hmm. highlighting the challenges and the ways forward as well, and the current situation, like you know, how exactly things are going on going on in relation to our practices, and then you know the policy aspect as well. That's what I was actually looking for to learn. So I got it. Uh, so uh, yeah, quick things like you know, as I mentioned in the chat box as well. First of all, we need to categorize our challenges in you know challenges. Uh, for example, in a in a broader framework, could be like system level barriers or let's say school level barriers, and then the teacher level barriers. So whenever we talk about teacher level barriers, we can we can talk about our confidence, our efficacy. By the way, what technical skills do we need to learn further? So is that there? Again, it will be more context. Uh, you know, context sensitive. For example, the context in, uh, let's say, far western, we cannot replicate the context in the you know our, uh, urban areas. So again, that also differ. Number one, number two, system level barriers, which is policies. We talk quite a lot. I I came to learn like you know Nepal is going to have the second master plan as well. Now let's consider how many of us are getting involved, or I have taken some insights from ourselves as well. In that case, what could be our roles as teacher educators? The question, the big question that you think of the system level barrier and the school level barriers. If our if we have like you know no proper infrastructures as of now, what should be there in the institution to at least you know deal with the current crisis situation as well? So uh, we can you know check ourselves like you know which which issue has to be addressed as a teacher, as a teacher educator, or as a, you know someone to input in the policy. Number one, number two is digital competency framework or digital literacy framework, which I'm advocating for. Unless and until we, we, we have digital literacy framework, we cannot evaluate ourselves where okay. exactly we are in terms of digital literacy. That's needed, which inform the policy, which inform our practice as well. Yes, thanks a lot. Okay. More than you know, my point today's discussion has been really, really okay. Thank, okay. You. okay, thank you very much, uh, Sagun sir. And thank you a lot, uh, the panelists, uh, Dr. Gautam, uh, Mr. Asuk Sakuta sir, and Dr. Suman Laudari sir, for their wonderful insight and uh, this opportunity to be a part of this uh, discussion. And so as a whole, what we get from this uh, discussion, overall discussion is, let us start from where we are. If we don't have two hands, thanks God we have one hand. Whatever we can do with one hand, let's try from that hand alone. 
at least we have one hand. And on the other hand, we are not just thinking about uh, uh, substituting the uh, usual uh, trend of classroom instruction. Uh, so, but uh, we are uh, so we are uh, trying to improve it in the sense of improvement alone. Uh, this technology should be integrated in our classroom, and we should start learning uh, e-friendly. Uh, or we, we should try to be e-friendly in teaching, learning, uh, so collecting materials and this all. Uh, so, so this is what uh, I'd like to request um, you all. And thank you a lot. Thank you a lot. lot. Thank you. Thank you, Ran, thank you. And That's and all I... for this panel discussion. Namaste. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Rajan sir, Nelda Chair Suruket, for your wonderful moderation. Uh, Dr. Uh, Ganga Gautam sir, our respected guru, uh, Lodari, Lodari sir, uh, Mr. Saksakpada sir, and complimentary max uh, Sagun sir.